Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another monthly reading wrap-up. So I just have the one book to start you off with today. That is Billy Summers by Stephen King. This is his newest book, at least at the time of filming, as far as I know. It's basically about uh, a hired assassin who agrees to go on one last job. Um, and then he meets somebody along the way who kind of becomes an ally and then he goes off sort of seeking his own vigilante justice at the end. Uh, I don't want to say too much about this because I will be doing a full review of it, but I did enjoy it a lot. I gave it a solid 4 out of 5. And it's probably my favourite of the recent-ish King books over the last two years or so. So, um... Yeah, would definitely recommend. And uh, the cover's very pretty too. Apparently we have a different cover in the UK to the US and ours is apparently better. So, hey. Dane Reads. Greetings people of YouTube. It is time for a wrap up and it has been a little while. It has been, as they say, a hot minute. Sorry, I'm just out of shot here getting some books for you. So I read The Car Turner by Louis Sakar. This was probably a four out of five. I've enjoyed all of Sakar's books that I've read so far. Um, this one I picked up from the book exchange. Oh no, I bought it for a charity shop. Um, I've read Holes and Small Steps and they were both great, but they were also both related, so it was good to read this as more of a standalone. It's basically, it's like, almost like a YA novel. It's got a lot of bridge in it, so it reminded me of Cards on the Table by Agatha Christie, if you've ever read that. Um, you don't need to know how to play bridge to read this, and in fact there are little sections which explain stuff, which it also says you can gloss over if you want to. Um, but I'm sure it would help, but it is a good novel at the heart of it as well. I gave it a 4 out of 5, um, basically about this teenage lad who, um, he goes to help his uncle, because his mum wants him to help his uncle in case they can get some inheritance from him, and his uncle's into bridge, and the kid just ends up getting really into bridge. So yeah, I enjoyed that. Then I read Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood, so this was a solid 4.5 out of 5 for me. Um, and yeah, this is like historical fiction slash non-fiction, I guess. So uh, it follows Grace Marks, who is like one of the well-known early female murderesses in Canadian history. And basically Atwood kind of tells her story, but obviously there is a lot of it in, in here that's fiction because some stuff just isn't known. Um, but really well written, 4.5 out of 5 for me and a strong contender for one of my books of the, uh, of the, of the quarter. And um, yeah, if you've read and enjoyed like In Cold Blood um, or uh, The Suspicions of Mr. Witcher, it kind of reminded me a lot of those. Uh, the Moonstone as well, Wilkie Collins, which I read not too long ago. Reminded me of all of those. It's just a uh, cracking like true crime story. And this is the second um, Margaret Atwood book that I've read after The Handmaid's Tale, which was my book of the year. And with these two, she's got a pretty solid, like, I think that means out of two books, she averages 4.75 out of 5 from me, which is pretty much unheard of. Uh, full review of both of those coming soon. Then we have these Mr. Men books. I'm just going to read you the titles. These are some of the, like, the more, the newer ones that tell little stories. So they're not just, like, Mr. Bump. They are, like, you know, Mr. Nosy and the Big Surprise. Uh, these are all by Roger Hargreaves. All of these I gave either a 3.5 or a 4 out of 5 to. Mr. Messy Messing About in the Snow, Mr. Happy Finds a Hobby, these ones here I have not reviewed yet so I need to review these, Mr. Tickle in a Tangle, Mr. Topsy Turvy The Wrong Way Round, no sorry The Round Way Wrong, Mr. Funny Upsets Mr. Fussy, where's the Mr. Bump one gone then? Here it is, uh, Mr. Bump Loses His Memory and Mr. Bump is probably my favourite Mr. Man so uh, that one was definitely a 4 out of 5. Then I read uh, Self Publishing by Emma Rosen. So this is Emma Rosen of Booktube slash Authortube fame. This is her new book. It's all about how to self publish. Um, I don't know that there was necessarily anything in it that I didn't know, but it's always good to have a refresher. And I do think this would be a great book for me to give to clients who are self publishing to basically be like, because they often ask me about, you know, what the process looks like, what they need to do, this and that. And now I can just say, just go and read Emma's book, it covers everything. So, okay, it's kind of a weak four out of five, but it's still a pretty strong uh, rating. I mean, my default for a professionally written and released book is a 3.5 out of five, so kind of above average there. Um, really nicely formatted and laid out and stuff as well. Um, my only, I guess, quibble is that it wasn't longer, but then it's an introduction rather than like, she could have probably made this three times as long. In fact, she even says at points, she's like, you know, okay, well, this section here, like editing, she could do a whole book on how to edit. So, um, yeah, it was just, it was just a good little release and uh, good of her to spread the, like, the indie and self-publishing love.
So yeah. Okay, I have two books to wrap up for you today. The first is Serve Cold, a horror tube anthology edited by Regina St. Clair and Steve Donahue. So um, I still think the um, Local Haunts is my favorite of the three booktube slash horror tube anthologies that have come out, but I mean, each of them is very valid in their own right. A uh, bunch of authors in this, about 20 odd I would say. Um, I did notice maybe a half, oh fuck's sake. I knew as soon as I started filming, my washing machine was gonna finish, hang on. Uh, all right, also my tumble dryer isn't working for whatever reason, so everything's soaking wet, but you don't need to know that. So yeah, I did notice maybe a half a dozen typos in this, um, and I didn't notice any in the first, in um, in Local Haunts, um, but I mean it happens with indies, so you know, you got to be forgiven for that. And the actual stories themselves are pretty good, as with any short story, some were better than others, some kind of really blew my mind, some gave me just the right amount of chills. Um, for example, there was a good one, uh, who's, who was it by? It was by Mike DeFrench. Um, his story was set in like a walk-in freezer, which has always freaked me out, specifically the idea of getting trapped in one. Um, who else did we have? Let's have a look. Lake Alice was pretty good. Thou by Merz Sumida. In fact, um, it goes uh, Regina's story, then Merz's story, back to back, and they were probably two of the best. Um, yeah, lots of different stuff and lots of different genres as well, so um, do definitely check this out. And all the proceeds go to charity as well, so that's always good. And then I read my bedtime book, which is Asterix aux Jeux Olympique, which is by Argosini and Eudet. So, c'est une bande dessinée uh, en anglais. It's a, a graphic novel slash sort of like a bind up of a comic, I guess. Um, Asterix est un Gaulle. Il habite en France during like the 60s, as in 0060s. Uh, Julius Caesar's knocking him out, and so in fact that's just BC, isn't it? 54 BC, we learned that at school. Um, and Asterix and Obelix and the Gauls go and partake in the Olympic Games. Did enjoy, I, I must admit I'm losing the will a bit to continue with the Asterix series, but I am on book like 12 or something. Next we have Asterix et le Chaudron. Um, I don't know what that means in English, but I guess I'll find out when I get to it. Overall, like 3.5 out of 5. And it's just a good way to continue to practice reading my French, you know? So, uh, I read this which my mum sent to me as part of a, a, a care package. This is Trivia on the Bog by Anonymous slash Unknown. Um, and it's basically just a bunch of facts. The idea being that you read it on the toilet. Um, you know, for example, I've just read, Author and storyteller Quentin Crisp's real name was somewhat less flamboyant. He was known as Dennis Pratt until he reinvented himself in his early 20s. So, like, 80 pages of that, basically. It was alright, probably like a 3 out of 5. I've read more interesting fact books, but for what it was, it was alright. It only took, like, I don't know, probably like 20 minutes of reading time to get through. Then I read Little Wizard Stories of Oz by L. Frank Baum, illustrated by John R. Neal. So um, the illustrations are actually really nice. The actual just general layout of this book was beautiful. And it's uh, yeah, like printed on recycled paper. Um, just really nice little collection. It's uh, six short stories. Um, so, you know, they're aimed at younger readers, apparently. Although to me, it just read like the rest of the Oz books. It's just that the length of a chapter became a short story, you know? Um, and yeah, it was all right. It didn't really add a huge amount to like the Oz canon or whatever. It more just sort of added a bit of color. But if you're into the Oz books, you should probably check it out if you haven't already. I guess it's one of the more obscure ones because I mean, it wasn't, I don't think at the time at least, it wasn't published, you know? Uh, I gave it like a 3.5 out of five. It was just all right. Uh, review of that coming soon though. And then I read a bunch of these uh, Mr. Men for Adults books. So you know I've been on uh, a Mr. Men hype, the Roger Hargreaves books lately. Um, and so these are some parodies. So this is Mr. Midlife Crisis and Friends, a very unofficial parody by Jack Collier. Uh, this was a three out of five. I mean, it was okay. Um, but it's literally so unofficial, they couldn't use any of the Mr. Men. And then we move on to these ones, which these were all done by a team of three. Uh, Sarah Dakin, Lizzie Dakin, and Liz Banks. Uh, and these are all four out of five. So we have Mr. Happy in the Office Party, Little Miss Busy, Surviving Motherhood, Mr. Greedy, Eats Clean to Get Lean, 
and Little Miss Shy Goes Online Dating. So these were a lot more fun because they in included the original Mr. Men characters and then put them into these situations, you know. Um, and yeah, it was just a lot of a lot of fun, you know. Very playful. Definitely for adults though. Then I read House Carino by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is uh, the third of the Prelude to June trilogy. Um, it wasn't quite as good as the first two books, mainly because it was wrapping things up, but that's kind of the nature of this book, you know. I did still give it a 3.5 out of 5, um, and did find it very enjoyable. If you're into the June books, I think you will enjoy it. Uh, I certainly did, and I'm looking forward to reading more of the Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson books. Uh, full review of this coming soon as well. And now I have to go because I film in 15 minute bursts, otherwise I lose my voice. Okay, I have two more. We've got Herbert and Pullman. Okay. So uh, I read Grim Tales by Philip Pullman. I actually read this by an audiobook. Um, I don't really like fairy tales um, <laughs> for the reason I said in, on a tweet I posted. Um, a lot of the stories in this were somebody being told not to do something because a bad thing will happen. They do what they were told not to do, the bad thing happens, and then they do the surprise Pikachu face, and it's incredibly annoying, because it's like, what did you expect to happen? You knew that was going to happen. You were told that was going to happen. Um, I listened to this via an audiobook, and I'm glad I did, because I didn't really want to read it. It was going to become a bedtime book, and so by switching it as an audiobook, I got through it over like, a couple of days or something. I just don't like fairy tales. So Philip Pullman is one of my favourite authors, but the, the best I can give this is a 3 out of 5. If you like fairy tales, you might enjoy it more than I did. For me, it was very much a case of just ticking it off so I don't have to have it on my list anymore. I also read 48 by James Herbert. So this is like an alternative history, historical fiction novel, I guess. Um, set in London in 1948 in the aftermath of um, basically towards the end of the Second World War Hitler knew he was losing so he launched these rockets that contained uh, like a it's called the blood death like a, a plague almost um, and it kills everybody that doesn't have uh, a B type blood so by the time the action of this rolls around in 1948 there aren't that many survivors a lot of the people who are, have survived have got the blood death they're just like not quite checked out um, and then you have some like perfectly healthy AB type people like big bits of London have burned down because like you know there's been explosions and gas lines and all of this stuff and no maintenance and that um, but yeah it was interesting my problem is that the actual setup of it made me think I should really enjoy it um, and then I, for whatever reason, I just didn't get absorbed in it. I think part of the reason is because it starts with a chase scene. And it's hard to get too involved in a chase scene when you don't know who the characters are. So you have no reason to take sides or to be interested in the outcome, you know. Um, but yeah, it did pick up. There's also a lot of like, I don't know, just almost tie-ins with Herbert to the work. Like in, um, there were scenes with some rats, for example. Some references to the New Forest, which he's used in a few of his other books. So it was interesting to see how he kind of ends up writing about a lot of the same things, but like through different lenses or whatever. Um, this was a very weird bind up as well because it was bound up with The Ghosts of Sleeth, which is book number two or number three in the David Ash series. And I don't have book number one. So I've read half of this book. You can see from my tabs, I did, you know, a bit of a strange one. But um, yeah, I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. It was okay. It wasn't Herbert's best. Um, but it wasn't his worst either. And then I read The Writer's Journey by Christopher Vogler. So this book has been my longest owned but unread book for quite some time. I, I bought this when I was at university and I graduated over 10 years ago. Um, so it was one of the books that was recommended during the classes and it, it covers, um, what's his name, Joseph Campbell, his uh, hero's journey. Um, it basically is Vogler explaining that in his own words and using like references from popular culture problem is, is uh, this was published in 1996 so a lot of the popular culture references haven't really aged that well. He also knows nothing about Star Wars. He kept using Star Wars as an example and so he talked about, he's twice said um, that Luke learns that Darth Vader is his father at the end of Return of the Jedi uh, and that happened at the end of The Empire Strikes Back. He talked about Obi-Wan and Darth Vader having a laser duel. It was a lightsaber duel. He talked about, he used the Death Star all as one word, when it's two words. And what was the other one? 
So uh, he said that Obi-Wan said, trust the force, Luke. And he didn't, he said, use the force, Luke. So it's just annoying that there were all of those little mistakes in it. It kind of made me then question the rest of his stuff, you know? Um, he also used the Wizard of Oz quite a lot, which was interesting because I've been buddy reading those books with Joel Swagman as well. Overall, I mean, it was all right for what it was. I think personally, I would have rather have just read Joseph Campbell's but. Um, I think you would get some stuff out of this and some tips and tricks if you're a new writer But you know if I'd read this while I was at uni it might have been useful um, Not so much by this point because I'm kind of familiar with all of the concepts that he talks about in it And I haven't seen most of the films that he was referring to as well um, I gave it like a weak 3.5 out of 5 it just about scraped it It was almost a 3 out of 5 but um yeah, make of that as you will. If you are a writer, maybe consider checking it out. Otherwise, probably probably don't. All right, so I read The Butlerian Jihad by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. This is the first book in a trilogy, which is the Legends of Dune series. Uh, the Butlerian Jihad is the war against the thinking machines. So if you're interested in stuff like AI, robotics, uh, you're gonna enjoy this one. As you can see, I made a fair few tabs that I'm gonna talk about in my review of this one. Did enjoy it. Um, it wasn't as good as the house books, uh, House of Trades, Har Harkonnen, and Carino, um, but it was still fascinating. I think the problem with it was that because it took place so far in the past, you do still get members of the houses that you know, um, but you don't get any characters that you necessarily know about. Although, again, you get to discover why it's called the Butlerian Jihad, for example, named after Marion Butler, who is a character in this. A little baby. A little baby. Um, and yeah, enjoyed it. Uh, we also learned, I mean, this is kind of, uh, you can see from the front of it, we learn about the taming of the sandworms. Or not the taming, but the way that they are converted into beings that you can ride. Although, the Fremen don't necessarily knock about in this. This like predates the Fremen, which is interesting. Overall, pretty strong 3.5 out of 5. Did enjoy. Full review coming soon. Then I read some of the Mr. Men books. So... These are all by Roger Hargreaves. Um, these, I just gave them all a blanket 3.5 out of 5. Uh, just reading them to work through the Mr. Men series, basically. So we have Little Miss Quick, Little Miss Tiny, Little Miss Bossy, Little Miss Contrary, Little Miss Fickle, Little Miss Scatterbrain, Little Miss Somersault, and Little Miss Splendid. So yes, those are enjoyable. Um, and it's nice to read some more of the Little Miss ones because I've read more of the Mr. Men so it's nice to, you know, get a, a bit of equality going there, I guess. And then we have Haunted by James Herbert. So this is the first David Ash book. It's got very nice golden spine. Um, it felt quite dated to me. Let's have a look at when it was published. I feel like it must have been early-ish in his career. No, 1988, so not that early. I mean, uh, probably towards the middle, I guess. Um, yeah, this is the first book of uh, a trilogy, the David Ash trilogy. And actually the final one, Ash, was the last book that he wrote, I think. Uh, the Ghosts of Sleeth is book number two, so I'm gonna be reading that soon. I didn't think it was particularly good. Um, I mean, because he wrote, um, what do you call it? The Secret of Crickley Hall. That is a very good ghost story, like an archetypical ghost story. This almost felt like a knockoff of Crickley Hall. So I don't know which way round he wrote them in, but um, yeah, it was just okay. Um, there was a twist at the end that I thought was very predictable. Um, not as much gore as I'd like as well, it was much more one of those sort of lingering horror things. And a lot of jumping backwards and forwards through time, but also through perspective. Like you'd have David Ashes at this place and he's ringing somebody up and then suddenly the narrator's talking about what someone else is doing in another location, but during the same scene, and I, I found that really jarring. And um, there was also like a bit of um, uh, passive voice. So where is it on this one? Through the squalid and littered kitchen hurried Ash. No, mate, you mean Ash hurried through the squalid and littered kitchen. But um, yeah, it was all right. It was like 3.5 out of 5, not one of his best. Um, but I'm glad I read it. All right, so just one final book to wrap up for you this month. That is The Ghosts of Sleeth by James Herbert. This is David Ash book number two. I definitely feel as though he's sort of started to hit his, uh, his stride, should I say, with this series now. Um, the first book was just a little short and just felt a bit like a throwaway and now it's starting to feel like proper novels. Uh, it helped that Sleeth is a fictional village in the Chiltern Hills, which is basically where I live. The Chiltern Hills are the nearest big hills to me. Uh, you can actually, I mean, Wickham is built in like a valley and then you can see parts, parts of the town go up the hills. So, um, 
I've, I live near little villages like Sleeth. Um, it's a haunted story, except instead of a haunted house, it's almost like a haunted village. Um, David Ash is still pretty unlikable as a protagonist, not gonna lie. Um, and he's got that like brilliant alcoholic thing going on. Uh, you definitely are gonna wanna read these books in order as well, because if you didn't, there would be spoilers in this book for the first book because, and quite rightly so, what happened in the first book, it still kind of haunts him. Um, and which is interesting because the book's called Haunted. But yeah, it's definitely a step up from Haunted. I would give this one still only like a 3.5 out of 5, but a strong one when uh, Haunted was probably a weak one. Uh, and then soon I will have Ash to get to, which is the third and final book. And it's actually James Herbert's last book as well. So there you have it. Those are the books that I read in January. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.